Ruth 1. Now it happened in the days when the judges judged that there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem in Judah went to sojourn in the fields of Moab with his wife and his two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Malan and Chilion, Ephrathites of Bethlehem in Judah. Now they came to the fields of Moab and remained there. Then Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. They took for themselves Moabite women as wives. The name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other, Ruth, and they lived there about ten years. Then both Milan and Chilion also died, and the woman was left without her two children and her husband. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law and returned from the fields of Moab, for she had heard in the fields of Moab that Yahweh had visited his people to give them food. So she went forth from the place where she was, and her two daughters-in-law with her. They went on the way to return to the land of Judah. And Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go, return each of you to her mother's house. May Yahweh show loving kindness with you, as you have shown with the dead and with me. May Yahweh grant that you may find rest, each in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voices and wept. And they said to her, No, but we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Return, my daughters. Why should you go with me? Have I yet sons in my womb that they may be your husbands? Return, my daughters. Go, for I am too old to have a husband. If I said I have hope, if I should even have a husband tonight and also bear sons, would you therefore wait until they were grown? Would you therefore refrain from marrying? No, my daughters. For it is more bitter for me than for you, for the hand of Yahweh has gone forth against me. And they lifted up their voices and wept again, and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. Then she said, Behold, your sister-in-law has returned to her people and her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not press me to forsake you in turning back from following you, for where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. Thus may Yahweh do to me, and more, if anything but death separates you and me. So she saw that she was determined to go with her, and she said no more to her. Then they both went until they came to Bethlehem. Now it happened, when they had come to Bethlehem, All the city was stirred because of them, and the woman said, Is this Naomi? She said to them, Do not call me Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full, but Yahweh has caused me to return empty. Why do you call me Naomi? Yahweh has answered against me, and the Almighty has brought calamity against me. So Naomi returned, and with her Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law, who returned from the fields of Moab. Now they came to Bethlehem at the beginning of barley harvest. Acts 26 Now Agrippa said to Paul, You are permitted to speak for yourself. Then Paul, stretching out his hand, began to make his defense. Concerning all the things of which I am accused by the Jews, I regard myself blessed, King Agrippa, that I am about to make my defense before you today especially because you are an expert in all customs and questions among the Jews. Therefore, I beg you to listen to me patiently. So then, all Jews know my manner of life from my youth, which from the beginning was spent among my own nation and at Jerusalem, since they have known about me for a long time, if they are willing to testify, that I lived as a Pharisee according to the strictest sect of our religion, And now I am standing here being tried for the hope of the promise made by God to our fathers, the promise to which our twelve tribes hope to attain, as they earnestly serve God night and day. And for this hope, O King, I am being accused by Jews. Why is it considered unbelievable among all of you if God does raise the dead? So then, I thought to myself that I had to do many things hostile to the name of Jesus the Nazarene. And this is just what I did in Jerusalem. Not only did I lock up many of the saints in prisons, having received authority from the chief priests, but also when they were being put to death, I cast my vote against them. And as I punished them often in all the synagogues, 
I tried to force them to blaspheme, and being furiously enraged at them, I kept pursuing them even to foreign cities. While so engaged, as I was journeying to Damascus with the authority and commission of the chief priest, at midday, O king, I saw on the way a light from heaven, brighter than the sun, shining all around me and those who were journeying with me. And when we had all fallen to the ground, I heard a voice saying to me in the Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is hard for you to kick against the goads. And I said, Who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise up and stand on your feet. For this purpose I have appeared to you, to appoint you a servant and a witness, not only to the things which you have seen, but also to the things in which I will appear to you, rescuing you from the Jewish people and from the Gentiles, to whom I am sending you, to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light, and from the authority of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who have been sanctified by faith in me. So, King Agrippa, I did not prove disobedient to the heavenly vision, but kept declaring both to those of Damascus first, and also at Jerusalem, and then throughout all the region of Judea, and even to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God, practicing deeds appropriate to repentance. For this reason some Jews seized me in the temple and were trying to put me to death. Therefore, having obtained help from God to this day, I stand here bearing witness both to small and great, stating nothing but what the prophets and Moses said was going to take place, that the Christ was to suffer, and that as first of the resurrection from the dead, he was going to proclaim light both to the Jewish people and to the Gentiles. Now while Paul was saying this in his defense, Festus said in a loud voice, Paul, you are out of your mind. Great learning is driving you out of your mind. But Paul said, I am not out of my mind, most excellent Festus, but I utter words of sober truth. For the king knows about these matters, and I speak to him also with confidence, since I am persuaded that none of these things escapes his notice, for this has not been done in a corner. King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know you believe. But Agrippa replied to Paul, In such short time are you persuading me to become a Christian? And Paul said, I would pray to God that whether in a short or long time, not only you, but also all who hear me this day might become such as I am, except for these chains. And the king stood up, and the governor and Bernice, and those who were sitting with them. And when they had gone aside, they began talking to one another, saying, This man is not doing anything worthy of death or imprisonment. And Agrippa said to Festus, This man could have been set free if he had not appealed to Caesar. Jeremiah 36. Now it happened that in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, this word came to Jeremiah from Yahweh, saying, Take a scroll of a book and write on it all the words which I have spoken to you concerning Israel and concerning Judah and concerning all the nations. From the day I first spoke to you, from the days of Josiah, even to this day, perhaps the house of Judah will hear all the evil which I devised to bring on them, in order that every man will turn from his evil way. Then I will forgive their iniquity and their sin. Then Jeremiah called Baruch the son of Neriah, and Baruch wrote on a scroll at the dictation of Jeremiah all the words of Yahweh which he had spoken to him. And Jeremiah commanded Baruch, saying, I am confined, I cannot go into the house of Yahweh. So you shall go and read from the scroll which you have written at my dictation, the words of Yahweh in the hearing of the people in the house of Yahweh on a fast day. And also you shall read them in the hearing of all the people of Judah who come from their cities. Perhaps their supplication will come before Yahweh, and every one will turn from his evil way. For great is the anger and the wrath that Yahweh has spoken against this people. So Baruch the son of Neriah did according to all that Jeremiah the prophet commanded him, reading from the book the words of Yahweh in the house of Yahweh. Now it happened in the fifth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, in the ninth month, that all the people in Jerusalem and all the people who came from the cities of Judah to Jerusalem called for a fast before Yahweh. 
Then Baruch read from the book the words of Jeremiah in the house of Yahweh in the chamber of Gamariah the son of Shaphan the scribe in the upper court at the entry of the new gate of the house of Yahweh in the hearing of all the people. Then Micaiah the son of Gamariah the son of Shaphan heard all the words of Yahweh from the book. And he went down to the king's house into the scribe's chamber and behold all the officials were sitting there Elishama the scribe, and Deliah the son of Shemaiah, and Elnathan the son of Achbor, and Gamariah the son of Shaphan, and Zedekiah the son of Hananiah, and all the other officials. And Micaiah declared to them all the words that he had heard when Baruch read from the book in the hearing of the people. Then all the officials sent Jehudai the son of Nethaniah, the son of Shalamiah, the son of Cushi, to Baruch, saying, Take in your hand the scroll from which you have read in the hearing of the people, and come. So Baruch the son of Neriah took the scroll in his hand and went to them. And they said to him, Sit down, please, and read it in our hearing. So Baruch read it in their hearing. Now it happened that when they heard all the words, they turned in dread to one another and said to Baruch, We will surely declare all these words to the king. And they asked Baruch, saying, Declare to us, please. How did you write all these words? Was it at his dictation? Then Baruch said to them, He dictated all these words to me, and I wrote them with ink on the book. Then the official said to Baruch, Go, hide yourself, you and Jeremiah, and do not let anyone know where you are. So they went to the king in the court, but they had deposited the scroll in the chamber of Elishama the scribe, and they declared all the words in the hearing of the king. Then the king sent Jehudai to get the scroll, and he took it out of the chamber of Elishama the scribe. And Jehudai read it in the hearing of the king as well as in the hearing of all the officials who stood beside the king. Now the king was sitting in the winter house in the ninth month, with a fire burning in the brazier before him. And it happened that when Jehudai had read three or four columns, the king cut it with a scribe's knife and threw it into the fire that was in the brazier, until all the scroll was consumed in the fire that was in the brazier. Yet the king and all his servants who heard all these words were not in dread, nor did they tear their garments. Even though Elnathan and Deliah and Gamariah interceded with the king not to burn the scroll, he would not listen to them. And the king commanded Jeremiel, the king's son, Sariah, the son of Azrael, and Shalemiah, the son of Abdeel, to take Baruch the scribe and Jeremiah the prophet, but Yahweh hid them. Then the word of Yahweh came to Jeremiah after the king had burned the scroll, and the words which Baruch had written at the dictation of Jeremiah, saying, Take again another scroll, and write on it all the former words which were on the first scroll which Jehoiakim the king of Judah burned. And concerning Jehoiakim king of Judah you shall say, Thus says Yahweh, You have burned this scroll, saying, why have you written on it that the king of Babylon will certainly come and make this land a ruin, and will make man and beast to cease from it? Therefore, thus says Yahweh concerning Jehoiakim king of Judah, He shall have no one to sit on the throne of David, and his dead body shall be cast out to the heat of the day and the frost of the night. And I will also punish him and his seed and his servants for their iniquity, and I will bring on them and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and the men of Judah all the evil that I have spoken about to them. But they did not listen. Then Jeremiah took another scroll and gave it to Baruch the son of Neriah the scribe, and he wrote on it at the dictation of Jeremiah all the words of the book which Jehoiakim king of Judah had burned in the fire, and many similar words were added to them. Jeremiah 45 this is the message which Jeremiah the prophet spoke to Baruch the son of Neriah when he had written down these words in a book at Jeremiah's dictation in the fourth year of Jehoiakim the son of Josiah king of Judah, saying, Thus says Yahweh the God of Israel to you, O Baruch. You said, Ah, woe is me, for Yahweh has added sorrow to my pain. I am weary with my sighing and have found no rest. Thus you are to say to him, Thus says Yahweh, Behold, what I have built I am about to pull down, and what I have planted I am about to uproot, that is, the whole land. But as for you, are you seeking great things for yourself? Do not seek them, for behold, I am going to bring calamity on all flesh, declares Yahweh. 
but I will give your life to you as spoil in all the places where you may go. Psalm 9 For the choir director, Amuth Laban, a psalm of David. Aleph I will give thanks to Yahweh with all my heart. I will recount all your wondrous deeds. Aleph I will be glad and exult in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. Baith When my enemies turn back, they stumble and perish before you. For you have maintained my justice and my cause. You have sat on the throne judging righteously. Gimel, you have rebuked the nations, you have made the wicked perish, you have blotted out their name forever and ever. Hey, the enemy has come to an end in perpetual ruins, and you have uprooted the cities, the very memory of them has perished. Vav, but Yahweh abides forever, he has established his throne for judgment. Vav, and he will judge the world in righteousness, he will render justice for the peoples with equity. Vav, Yahweh also will be a stronghold for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of distress. Vav, and those who know your name will put their trust in you, for you, O Yahweh, have not forsaken those who seek you. Zion, sing praises to Yahweh who abides in Zion. Declare among the peoples his acts, for he who requires blood remembers them. He does not forget the cry of the afflicted. Haith, be gracious to me, O Yahweh. See my affliction from those who hate me, you who lift me up from the gates of death, that I may recount all your praises, that in the gates of the daughter of Zion I may rejoice in your salvation. Taith, the nations have sunk down in the pit in which they have made. In the net which they hid, their own foot has been caught. Yahweh has made himself known. He has executed judgment. In the work of his own hands the wicked is snared. Higion, Selah. Yod, the wicked will return to Sheol, even all the nations who forget God. Kaf, for the needy will not always be forgotten, nor the hope of the afflicted perish forever. Arise, O Yahweh, do not let man prevail. Let the nations be judged before you. Put them in fear, O Yahweh. Let the nations know that they are but men. Selah.